Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. On the evening of October 8, the internationally renowned academic journal Nature published research findings from the Zhu Pengliu Chun Sen team at Fudan University's School of Integrated Circuits and Micronanoelectronics and the National Key Laboratory of Integrated Chips and Systems. The team completed the development of a prototype, Dawn, two-dimensional flash memory device in April of this year, making it the world's first and fastest two-dimensional flash memory device. Amidst the global sensation surrounding this technological achievement, the US government blacklisted 23 Chinese entities, including Fudan Microelectronics, on September 12th local time. How does this technology differ from conventional memory chip technology? Why has it triggered US sanctions and suppression? What are their concerns? It is understood that the Zhu Pengliu Chun Sen team at Fudan University's laboratory has been deeply engaged in the challenge of speeding up flash memory chips. Unlike conventional semiconductor computing chips, Memory chips have extremely high data transfer efficiency requirements, requiring millions of operations per second. With the continuous advancement of AI technology, conventional memory chips are gradually failing to meet the practical needs of large-scale AI scenarios. The speed limit of information storage has become a technical challenge that integrated circuits urgently need to overcome. Currently, the fastest memory in the industry is volatile memory, with a speed of 1 to 30 nanoseconds and the potential for data loss after a power outage. Conventional flash memory products don't easily lose data, but their efficiency lags over 100,000 times behind chip computing power. It can be said that the technical bottleneck of memory chips has severely restricted the development and exploration of AI technology. This time, a research team from Fudan University has overcome the technical challenge of storage speed. By reconstructing the memory device architecture and analyzing the raw materials, they have successfully developed a two-dimensional flash memory device called Dawn, which boasts a storage efficiency one million times faster than traditional flash memory. This flash memory technology can theoretically reach a speed of 4 million picoseconds. Once commercialized, it will lead Chinese industries in achieving a global technological breakthrough, surpassing American companies in commercialization and widespread adoption in this field. The United States naturally does not want to lag behind China in relevant fields. Therefore, on September 12th of this year, the U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security BIS, announced amendments to the Export Administration Regulations EAR, adding 32 entities to the entity list, including Shanghai Fudan Microelectronics Company, Limited and the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Aerospace Information Innovation. These key research institutes and institutions are essentially China's sharp sword in its pursuit of breakthroughs in the chip industry. Through university enterprise collaboration, research teams are more likely to be the first to achieve breakthroughs in cutting-edge technologies. The United States is concerned not only about the technological revolution triggered by the new memory device Dawn, but also about the subsequent rulemaking being dominated by Chinese companies, leaving American tech companies significantly behind. A teacher once said, those who lag behind will be beaten. The United States does not want to be the laggard, so it frequently hinders China in the chip sector. Huawei was previously added to the entity list because it was already ahead of the United States in 5G communications. Today, a similar situation is recurring demonstrating the U.S.'s concern that China's technological breakthroughs will dominate the discourse in related industries. This struggle for discourse and rulemaking power is the fundamental reason behind the U.S.'s frequent regulatory actions against China. Currently, over a thousand companies have been added to the U.S. entity list, 
with Chinese entities comprising a third. As for whether sanctions can truly curb technological innovation in Chinese companies, even the US itself isn't convinced. In the 1950s, the US strictly blocked nuclear technology from China. However, the subsequent development of the two bombs and one satellite not only shattered the Western belief that China had no nuclear weapons, but also propelled China to a permanent seat on the UN Security Council. The US fears a breakthrough in Chinese chip technology, just as it once feared China developing an atomic bomb. Knowing that the historical trend cannot be stopped, the US continues to restrict the breakthrough of Chinese technology companies through technological containment. The US's goal is simply to seize as much excess profits as possible from Chinese companies before China achieves a technological breakthrough. Will the scientific research capabilities of Chinese entities be affected? The suspension of equipment and technical services may impact the progress of some research projects, but it will also ignite the fighting spirit of researchers. Today, the average age of the Fudan team is under 35, and Liu Chun-sen has just been selected as one of the 35 under 35 innovators in science and technology. Youth is the strength of China's research teams. Back then, Qian Shuesen and his colleagues used an abacus to calculate satellite orbits. Today, China's new generation of researchers can also use homegrown methods to solve technical problems that are stuck by the West. Talent is fundamental, and the intensified US sanctions will only strengthen Chinese students' resolve to serve the country through science and technology. Today, in Fudan's laboratories, a memory device the size of a fingernail, yet one million times faster than traditional flash memory, demonstrates the innovative capabilities of China's research teams more than any other product. U.S. suppression and sanctions cannot prove its own strength. They only prove that the U.S. is afraid of China achieving technological breakthroughs first, and that its chip technology will surpass that of the U.S. Just like the day Fudan Microelectronics was added to the list, its stock price actually rose instead of falling. As the U.S. Department of Commerce's entity list grows, its technological weaknesses are increasingly exposed. Today, the U.S. chip industry is a paper tiger built on a bubble. It appears powerful, but it's full of bubbles. When the flames of technological revolution ignite in the East, the so-called leadership on the other side of the ocean will be clearly exposed. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.